come over here, darling? Well, there weren't many surprises in the budget. Most of it had been leaked or even better announced beforehand. So Tuesday night came and went, as it does. But next morning there was a big shock when Julia Gillard was introducing the disability levy legislation and she burst into tears. Julia Gillard, the woman regularly described by her colleagues as tough as nails, the woman who only a fortnight previously had told an audience of schoolgirls that she never showed weakness. But this time she did. She was overcome by the occasion, perhaps by the catharsis of finally getting one big reform into Parliament. And good luck to her. And of course it follows in an honourable tradition. Prime Ministers of Australia have been known to weep. Bob Hawke notoriously wept at least twice once when recounting the Tiananmen massacre and his sympathy for the victims there, and once when recounting his sympathy for himself in a drama and revealing later that one of his daughters was a heroin addict. So perhaps he had a case too for crying. Kim Beasley cried in Parliament after he'd been up all night reading the Stolen Children report and tried to recount some of the more harrowing stories within it. Again, crying for somebody else. But our Prime Ministers aren't always as altruistic. Kevin Rudd, of course, broke down in his farewell speech after being tossed by Julia Gillard in 2010. He was crying, apparently, as he recalled one of his great moments, the apology to the stolen generations, but it was hard not to believe that he was really there was an element, at least, of self-pity there. He was so later apologised for blubbing. And the tough man of them all, Malcolm Fraser, the great patrician, the Prime Minister with the Easter Island face, he broke down too when he lost the 1983 election. And there was a wonderful cartoon drawn of it at the time which showed what people really thought about Malcolm Fraser. Michael Lunig, did a drawing of two or three lefties sitting in front of a television set watching the election outcome and one of them calls to the others and said, look, Big Mel's crying, he's crying, you beauty, Big Mel's crying. But his friend says, oh no, those are aloof tears, those are arrogant tears, he can still beat us. And that, I think, is the story of Prime Ministers crying. Perhaps it was smarter of a New South Wales Premier, Neville Rand, who had as his motto, Balmain boys don't cry. It certainly didn't do him any harm to avoid that kind of softy emotion. And perhaps all men are in much the same position. Women still, with the gender divide, might be able to get away with it more easily. And it's difficult not to think that Julia Gillard at least evoked some belated sympathy from the masses when she broke down on Tuesday. God knows she could use some. I'm Mungo McCallum.